Namaste angels. I'm here to do the uh, daily reading for Monday the 19th and I'm going to begin with the events of uh, today, Sunday the 18th first because I think a few of them might be relevant for us. Um, just having glanced at them quickly as they popped up on my screen. Uh, the year 218 BC, so in 11 right off the bat, is the Second Punic War. At the Battle of Trebia, Hannibal's Carthin Carthaginian army heavily defeats Roman forces on Italian soil. In the year 1271, which is also 11, Kublai Khan renames his empire Yuan, marking the start of the Yuan dynasty of China. In the year 1603, the first fleet of the Dutch East India Company under Admiral Stephen Vanderhagen departs for the East Indies. In the year 1892, or 9 11, or 11 again, uh, Tchaikovsky's ballet, The Nutcracker Suite, premieres. So, how awesome is that? In the year 1957, the world's first nuclear power plant begins to generate electricity on this day, December 18th. Uh, in the year 1957, or 13, or 4, or 11, 11, at the Shipping Port Atomic Power Station in Pennsylvania, USA. Did you know Thomas Fleet publishes Mother Goose's Melodies for Children on this day in the year 1719, which is 9, 9, or 9? Famous birthdays, Charles Goodyear, Joseph Stalin, Ty Cobb. Famous weddings in the year 1915, U.S. President uh, Wilson is widowed the year before and marries Edith Bowling Galt. In the year 1926 or 9, actor George Murphy, who was 24 or 6 like mother, um, that number that's been very prevalent this week, weds ballroom dancer partner Juliet Hinkle. In the year 1932, civil rights activists Rosa Parks, who was 19, like father's number, uh, weds Raymond Parks, who was 29 or 11 in Montgomery, Alabama. In the year, and of course, 1932 was another six like mother. In the year 1962 or nine, pop singer Little Eva, who was also 19, weds a gentleman named James Harris. In the year 1966 or 67 or 13, or 4 or 11 11 actor Struther Martin who was 47 or 11 weds Helen Meisels in the year 1923 or 6 like mother jazz musician Louis Armstrong who was master number 22 or 4 or 11 11 himself at the time divorces Daisy Parker after 5 years of marriage in the year 1968 actor Peter Sellers who was 43 divorces actress Britt Elkland after four years of marriage. So he was seven and he was married for four years. Eleven. Famous deaths. Jean-Baptiste Lamarck and Bobby Jones. Bobby Jones looks to have been a golfer and appears, indeed he was, an American golfer, the most successful amateur golfer ever to compete on a national and international level. He retired at age 28. He was born on March 17th, so that's uh, St. Patrick's Day, in the year 1902, or 111, a Pisces from Atlanta, Georgia, USA. He died on December 18th in the year 1971 at the age of 69, or 15, which is six, like mother. Cause of death was something called Syringomyelia. Syringomyelia. S-Y-R-I-N-G-O-M-Y-E-L-I-A. Sounds like some sort of cancer. And Jean-Baptiste Lamarck was French, a French nationalist. And he's famous for the theory of inheritance and acquired characteristics and also something called Lamarckian evolution. He was born on August 1st in the year 1744, a Leo from Paris, France. He died on December 18th in the year 1829 or 9-11 or 11 at the age of 85 or 13 or 4 or 11-11. Eleven, eleven. Going up to the birthdays. Ty Cobb was an American 
Major League Baseball or MLB legend. He spent 22, master number 22, seasons with the Detroit Tigers, the last six as the team's player slash manager, and then finished his career with the Philadelphia Athletics. He set 90 records during his career, several of which he still holds today. He is widely considered as one of the greatest players of all time. But his legacy as an athlete has sometimes been overshadowed by his surly temperament, racism, and aggressive playing style. He was born on December 18th in the year 1886, a Sagittarius from Narrows, Georgia. Maybe that's why he was narrow-minded. Um... He died on July 8th, July 17th, sorry, in the year 1961 at the age of 74 or 11. Joseph Stalin was a Soviet and had been the Soviet general secretary for several years. He came into prominence after Vladimir Lenin's death in the year 1924, leading to the communist state till his own death in the year 1953, which is a nine. He instituted policies of collective agriculture and rapid industrialization and led to uh, rapid growth in the Soviet econ economy, but at a huge cost to Soviet citizens. He halted the Nazi invasion of the Soviet Union in World War II, helping defeat the axis of powers and establishing the Eastern Bloc of communist countries. He was born on December 18th in the year 1878, a Sagittarius from Gori Tiflis Governorate, Russian Empire. He died on March 5th in the year 1953 or 9 at the age of 74 or 11 of a stroke. And lastly, Charles Goodyear was an American and inventor. He invented and developed a process to vulcanize rubber in 1839, which is 111. Goodyear discovered the vulcanization process accidentally after five years of searching for a more stable rubber and stumbling upon the effectiveness of heating. He was born on December 18th, um, so 18 is 9. And he was, the year was 1800 or 9. He was a Sagittarius from New Haven, Connecticut, USA. He died on July 1st in the year 1860 at the age of 59. And that was the last. So I'm going straight to December 19th. So after that, we can go straight to the cards. In the year 1776, Thomas Paine published his first essay. It was called American Crisis, in which he wrote... These are the times that try men's souls. In the year 1783 or 811, perhaps involving strength, abundance, justice, um, and or Lady Portia and St. Germain, William Pitt the Younger becomes the youngest ever British Prime Minister at the age of 24 or 6, like mother. In the year 1922, Teresa Vaughn, who was also 24 or 6, confesses in court in Sheffield, England, to being married 61 times over five years in 50 cities in three countries. Oh, my goodness. In the year 1932 or 6, like mother, British Broadcasting Corporation begins transmitting overseas. That's the BBC. In the year 1950 or 6, like mother, Tibet's Dalai Lama flees Chinese invasion. In the year 1958, the first radio broadcast from space is made. President Eisenhower's voice uh, reaches out to all of mankind and says, To all mankind, America's wish for peace on earth and goodwill to men everywhere. End quote. Did you know... A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens is published on this day in the year 1843. Um, so, December 19, 1843, 6,000 copies are sold. More mother. Famous birthdays, Ralph Richardson, Linoid Brezhnev, Edith Piaf, Doug Harvey, Reggie White, and Jake Gyllenhaal. Famous weddings. In the year 1895, poet Robert Frost, who was 21, weds Eleanor Miriam White in Lawrence, Massachusetts. 1912, or 13, or 4, or 11, 11, author Colette 
who was 39 at the time, was Le Matin, newspaper editor, Henri de Jovenel, J-O-V-J-O-U-V-E-N-E-L. Uh, doesn't give her any um, information about him, his age or anything. In the year 1919 or 11, composer and songwriter Cole Porter, who was 28, was socialite Linda Lee Thomas, who was 36 or 9. So, uh, 11 years his senior. In the year 1931, propagandist Joseph Goebbels, who was 34, weds Mar- Magda Reichstel, who was 30, at Gunther Quanz Farm in Mecklenburg, Germany. In the year 1975, astronaut Buzz Aldrin, who was 45 or 9, weds Beverly Zile. Um, and is it Buzz Aldrin or the other, uh, his partner, who passed away the day I pulled one of those cards that somebody was going to pass away, and he was 90 as well, I believe, at the time, or 9. Uh, I've been drawing these blank lately. I don't remember, but one of the um, astronauts, the first to walk on the moon, recently passed away. In the year 1995, Queen Elizabeth asked Prince Charles and Diana to divorce. They don't even call her princess there. So disrespectful. Uh, Famous deaths, Emily Bronte and Robert A. Milliken. Robert A. Milliken was American, a physicist. He was famous because he won the 1923 Nobel Peace Prize in physics for photoelectric effect. He was born on March 22nd, master number 22, in the year 1868 in Aries from Morrison, Illinois, USA. He died on December 19th in the year 1953 at the age of 85 or 13 or 4 or 11, 11 of a heart attack. Emily Bronte was English, a novelist. Uh, She's best remembered for her only novel, Wuthering Heights. Uh, And she's also the sister of Charlotte Bronte. She was born on July 30th in the year 1818 or 999 or 9, a Leo from Thornton, West Yorkshire, England. She died on December 19th in the year 1848 at the age of 30 of tuberculosis. Going back up to the birthdays now. Jake Gyllenhaal is 36 years old or nine. He's an American actor, most famous for Donnie Darko and Brokeback Mountain. He was born on December 19th in the year 1980. Again, he's 36 years old. I guess he'll be 37 on Monday. He's a Sagittarius from Los Angeles, California, USA. Reggie White is American, an NFL legend. He was a star defensive end for the Philadelphia Eagles and Green Bay Packers, who was twice named the NFL Defensive Player of the Year and was a 13-time Pro Bowl. He was born on December 19th in the year 1961, a Sagittarius from Chattanooga, Tennessee, USA. He died on December 26th in the year 2004 at the age of 43. And I just see six, six, seven, eight there. Um, the year 2004 is six, the age 43, seven, and the 26th of December, the 26th is eight when he died. Sometimes I feel like Rain Man (laughs) with the numbers that I see. In any case, I'm moving on. Doug Harvey was Canadian and in... HL legend. He played in the NH- NHL from 1947 or 111 until 1969. He is widely regarded as one of the greatest defensive men to ever play the game, winning the James Norris Memorial Trophy as the league's top defenseman on seven occasions. He was born on December 19th in the year 1924, a Sagittarius from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. He died on December 26th in the year 1989 at the age of 65 or 11 of cirrhosis of the liver. Edith Piaf was French, a singer, widely regarded as France's national diva. She was born on December 19th in the year 1915, a Sagittarius from Paris, France. She died on October 11th, so 111, in the year um, (laughs) 1, because it was 1963, at the age of 47 or 11. Uh, 
Leonid Brezhnev was Russian and the Soviet general secretary. He was the dominant political force in Soviet politics through much of the Cold War. He is the second longest serving general secretary after Stalin himself. Brezhnev rose steadily through the ranks to become Soviet leader of Khrushchev's protege in 1960. He was appointed chairman of the uh, presidium of the Supreme Soviet, a largely ceremonial position. In 1964, Brezhnev emerged as part of a group that deposed Khrushchev, and he was appointed general secretary of the Soviet Central Committee and Khrushchev's successor. In power, Brezhnev continued Khrushchev's hard line stance, presiding over the invasion of Czechoslovakia to halt the Prague Prague Spring and invading Afghanistan in 1979. He developed a policy of uh, detente, a gradual thawing with non-communist countries, particularly the U.S. Domestically, Brezhnev's time in power has been characterized as a period of economic stagnation. Living standards fell in part due to the huge um, spend on the military and on the space race. He was born on December 19th in the year 1906, a Sagittarius from Kamenskoy, Ukraine, Russia. He died on November 10th in the year 1982 at the age of 75 of a heart attack. And lastly, Ralph Richardson was English, an actor. He dominated the British stage of the mid-20th century before becoming a film star. He worked in films throughout most of his career and played in more than 60 cinema roles. He was also nominated for the Academy Award of his performance in something called Grey Stroke, G-R-E-Y-S-T-R-O-K-E. He was born on December 19th in the year 1902-111 and was a Sagittarius from... Chet, I'm sorry, Cheltenham, England. I was rubbing my eye at that exact moment. I was trying to read that word. He died on October 10th, so 1010 or 11, uh, in the year 1983, 111, at the age of 80 of a stroke. And he was the last of the birthdays and the history. I put the dice in front of me so I wouldn't forget them. So we're beginning before I shake them up with forget it. So not to get caught up in any foolishness. Just let everything go um, that does not matter. Most stuff is inconsequential when you think about it, um, like in the scope of things as uh, compared to, you know, life and, and wellness, health, um, goodwill and all that kind of stuff. Spirit also says romantic dinner and party, perhaps a holiday party, Christmas party, Hanukkah party. All right. Ooh, Spirit says yes. Is anybody that needed a yes or no answer to something? Also, weekend away. And cocktail. Okay. I'm going to use the Angel Tarot, beginning with the energy of the Ace of Earth. And I pulled out my Tarot of the Ages, I guess... At the very last minute, uh, I guess as a last ditch uh, attempt to try to get the Ace of Wands to show up here before Sagittarius is over. Um, the Ace of Earth is all about the inflow of abundance and a promising business venture, important documents or contracts that you may be signing, uh, you know, perhaps a new title or lease to something, some sort of property, um, new car, new home, new business space, office space, um, even a marriage license. Right. That's abundance, too, for you and a new contract that you'd be entering or maybe a, you know, virtual, more virtual contract, an agreement and a, co a commitment between you and another um, on a personal, perhaps romantic level or business level, because we also saw in the um, general reading over the weekend the two of wands, which of course can be very romantic, but can also signify some other sort of partnership. The two of um, water also showed up there, similar. And this was the heart of our matter. So it's carrying into uh, the week already as it should. Opening now to the four of air, all about rest and recovery, time to rest or take a vacation. Maybe that's the weekend away. Allow more time to, um, before you go and make a decision, meditation may help you to get some answers.
four of air is back. Opening up to the seven of water. This also showed up at least as I was shuffling over the weekend in the general reading. If it didn't show up in the spread. I don't think it showed up in the spread. I think just as I was shuffling. Some of us have a decision to make. Uh, and, I, and it definitely showed up in some of the personal readings as well. The time to do research. Stop procrastinating. So this applies to some of us. For sure. Four bears up. I'll go one more. Opening now to strength. Great inner strength. Release harsh judgment. Forgiveness and compassion are also necessary in this time. And the six of fire, which I think may have represented the masculine in the general reading. Victory, great news is on its way. Public recognition or awards. And the overall energy is the star, Archangel Jophiel. Happy times make positive, optimistic, long-term plans. You're on the right path. So again, on the 19th uh, today, Mercury enters, um, I'm sorry, Mercury goes retrograde. And is today also the day that, um, not the sun enters Capricorn, that's the 21st. Mm, I think today was something else too. <laughs> something else that I mentioned in the general weekly reading. The masculine is the eight of air, an illusion of being trapped, a lack of self-confidence, and he's afraid to take action. Surrounding him is the nine of fire. Don't give up. Protect that which you've created. Have courage and believe in yourself. And it looks like he has a decision to make. So maybe this is why the four of air kept showing up and saying allow time um, in meditation before you make that decision. This He's thinking about this heavily. Being unable or unwilling to make said decision, perhaps having reached a stalemate and pretending there is no problem. That does not help. The feminine is in a good place, however, at least thus far. She's the queen of water who is tenderhearted, empathetic, patient, and loving. Relationships develop to a new level. Trust your intuition. Care for yourself and others. Surrounded by the energy of renewal with Archangel Jeremiah. Review and evaluate. It's a favorable assessment of the facts. Time to move in a new direction. That would certainly be a positive one. So this indicates to me that we're coming out of something similar to the world uh, that wasn't all, all that awesome, but we've made it through and we're getting a blessed new beginning. And now to match the masculine's aid of air, his false sense of entrapment diagonal to it, um, we have the nine of air and expecting the worst. Self-fulfilling prophecies. Sleepless nights. This is manifesting negativity into our lives. Crowning is perhaps that party uh, that showed up in the dice. Um, so I would, as I said that, I thought I saw sex showing up. I'm like, that's not the dice that was there before. Um, yeah, so perhaps the party that showed up in the dice um, or a party of three, which would not necessarily be celebratory. Um, uh, but this card at face value is all about a celebration, a wedding, graduation, or birth announcement, and, or the need to have more fun to get out there and enjoy oneself. At the root is the high priestess and archangel Haniel. Listen to your intuition, have patience, and carefully consider 
what you want before acting. And at the heart of the matter from Archangel Michael. The dreamer and Archangel Metatron, a leap of faith, follow your dreams. They can lead to unexpected opportunities. So we've got three major arcana cards here in this reading. Uh, the dreamer or the fool, the high priestess, and renewal. Um, so two different versions of a fresh start, right? One is the leap of faith to something brand new. Um, and one is a leap of faith towards something that is renewed or is unnew again. We also have two twos here or two 11s with this being a 20. Um, 20 is 11 or two. And the high priest is another two, another 11. So we got 11, 11 here too. And I think we had 11, 11 in the final week of the Advent reading as well. And this is indeed the final week of Advent uh, in which this reading, this day falls. Let's take cards off the top to see if something will clarify the eight of air uh so the masculine wanting to certainly make a move toward the queen of fire who is confident warm intelligent and graceful stretch your wings and fly he might also want to in, in some ways be the queen of fire and stretch his, his wings and fly and not underestimate himself because he knows i am who I am and assert his in um independence and creativity but he has this false uh, illusion of being trapped and a lack of self-confidence. So now to counter that, you're being told that there's no need for you to have that. You should be confident because not only do you have a queen of fire um, to whom you can look for support, you are yourself the queen of fire as well, who again is confident, warm and intelligent and graceful. So she would not feel trapped um, or be afraid to take action. She's a warrior queen. Uh, might have something to do with this decision. Likely does. Let's see what the decision is about. Well, it's about taking a leap of faith and being the king of water, who is trustworthy, compassionate, respected, and cultured. Open your heart and mind to those around you. Trustworthy and heartfelt advice. Charity work, which to me is love. And you'll see it's here, diagonal to the dreamer. And I think this was the other thing I was trying to remember. Mars um enters pisces so maybe that's where all this water is coming from and now what we've ended up with is the king of water opposite the queen of water we may have some of those couples watching this reading right now um two water signs perhaps not you know the same one perhaps not but two water signs um both the king and queen of the suit here diagonal to one another only separated by the leap of faith if they each take the step forward uh they will meet here in the middle together as couples should make the effort to do meet each other in the middle somebody else may be trying to get him uh to not meet the queen of water in the middle and that may be about what the decision is deciding do i or do i not um do i let somebody else run my life or not and then remembering um the answer to that is or not because i am who I am and then we go ahead and we take the leap of faith. We become the king of water. For the feminine, atop the nine of air is the page of earth. So we have a desire to uh, learn a new skill, improve upon a skill, maybe as part of this renewal, our, our new selves, our new partnerships, our new relationships and unions. Um, one thing that would help us with those is being scholarly, dependable, patient, and successful. Also, we have good news about financial matters coming in. So maybe that's why I've been up at night thinking about money and how am I going to make it? And I want to do this and I want to do that, but I don't have what it needs. And we're manifesting uh, lack and negativity into our own lives when we do that. Uh, when we say I don't have, I don't have, I don't have. Instead, we need to be counting our blessing about what we do have. Um... And maybe we finally started to do that. And now, as a result, good news about financial matters is indeed on its way. And we're also wanting to do something more challenging and perhaps, yes, take on a new area of study. It's time to register uh, for colleges and things, vocational schools. And that's right now. It's time to register for classes that begin in January and February and all that kind of stuff. So many of us may be wanting to do that again as part of our renewal. 
Uh, anything else we want to clarify here? I think that's good. Some of us need to take this leap of faith and go ahead and approach uh, whatever this is. And know that we too are the queen of fire who is passionate about what she does. You got something about which you feel passionate that you'd like to become um, more officially um, you know, certified in. You can do that. You can literally become certified. Maybe that's the contract or something that you will sign. Some sort of uh, agreement to enter a study in an official capacity. For further advice, I have my Tarot of the Ages, beginning with the energy of X or 10, Roman uh, numeral 10, Major Arcana card 10, Fortune with Danae and Zeus. Now coming to the six of arrows, moving into calmer, stiller waters and perhaps going on a trip, traveling over water, um, but looking ahead to better days, better times in your life, like this suggests, and this suggests, and this suggests, and this suggests, and maybe even this suggests, because we're celebrating. Maybe I should take a card for that one too. What are we celebrating? Uh, yeah, we're, ce we're celebrating financial success, enjoying life's little luxuries, counting our blessings, like I said, and perhaps spending quiet time, time alone. Maybe alone doesn't have to be completely alone. Maybe alone is with our girlfriends and that's what we're doing with this three of water. Uh, it's a successful time of even self-employment. So if we signed again, a new uh, business agreement, a new office lease, a new um, business lease, we sign papers in order to become incorporated um, or trademarked or copywritten or something. And now we're celebrating that, you know, it's a toast to us cocktail, um, on us, to us, for us. And now the overall energy is the Queen of Cups. So the Queen of Cups very prevalent um, in this reading today because here she is again crowning the feminine. And now as an overall energy to our advice, um, our intuition is heightened. We should certainly be paying attention to it, listening to it. And I would say that this is also just uh, Pisces pulling up on the reading to say, you know, yeah, we're here. Further advice from my Tarot of the Ages, hoping to get a look at the Ace of Batons, beginning with the energy of the Knight of Batons, who is um, the Knight of Wands, the, again, um, quintessential Prince Charming. Coming to the energy of the Two of Coins and juggling uh the need for balance which we've seen many indications of particularly for the masculine this week um and it can also be yeah like a deja vu from hell but based on the other cards i don't think it's really necessarily that um as soon as we drop the negative thoughts we're in a really good place so i think it's just trying to do a little bit of everything trying to do work and home and school and you know be good at it all while we do it is the ten of cups this week is so phenomenal it's turning up so phenomenal if you've seen the um again the general weekly reading if you've seen the love reading a lot of positivity and now this daily um you know is like to die for too we got two queens here crowning uh, both the masculine and the feminine uh, the masculine is the queen of fire who's very very passionate and creative and positive and productive working hard um the feminine is the queen of water so we're showing our softer side our more empathetic and patient side this week our more loving and tender um side love that uh, but 
at the same time we're ready you know for a new start and to take a stand you know stand up for ourselves and face Archangel Jeremiah and our past and whatever else we have to face you know head on and you know embrace them so that we're we're in a we enable ourselves to put ourselves in a place where we can start all over again and maybe even by starting all over again going back to school which may be a place for some of us where we haven't been in years but we're that strong this week and, and in this day in particular um maybe because of the high priestess that's here to give us extra support and our intuition intuition is popping we got queen of water queen of water king of water high priestess intuition is like woo off the charts right now and again the king of water is the masculine here and at the heart of the matter archangel metatron uh guiding us to go ahead and take the leap to trust him take his hand if we need to and jump right in to that water on either side with him awesome and yeah the overall um outcome at least from this deck is the ten of cups which is complete emotional and even material um fulfillment we're just happy we're just happy happy people awesome love this so that is joining again the star, which is the wish card of the tarot and major arcana, spirit at the table. So that's one, two, three, um, four times over thus far. Haven't seen what's here yet. That star um, and Archangel Jophiel joining the Queen of Cups and the Ten of Cups. And from my tarot of the ages to the masculine. Okay, don't do this. You see this masculine here? He's got this beautiful cup behind him. Even if it's one of the ten, okay, that would leave him with nine cups, which is still the wish card of the tarot, an awesome card. Far better than um, these four that have fallen on the floor and spilled out that he's about which he's worried. And you see, she's not worried about it at all, nor is she worried about him. We don't want to end up in this type of situation. We want to, as I was saying before, count our blessings, turn around, look at that cup, pick it up, um... Take a sip, enjoy your cocktail, and go about your business because you've got so much stuff going on for you. Okay, don't get caught up in that. Feminine, we are the page of swords. Um, so we're guided to keep pushing, say what we need to say, speak our minds, not be afraid, don't hold back. You know, just do what you got to do. Try to be kind. Um, but if you got to get something out and it doesn't come out the right way, you know, apologize and keep it moving. That's it. Oh, and the masculine is the sun um, awakening in this deck. Major Arcana card number 19. How awesome is that for the 19th? And I was gonna, I tried to get my nails done this weekend, uh, but my tech wasn't there. I didn't want to go to somebody else um, because these are my real nails. And I've had other people just do horrible things when they like do the file from the top they make them paper thin and whatnot in any case i was going to get them yellow which is why i started talking about that yellow because i was feeling the sun even though it's a you know christmas week and the week uh ends with christmas eve on saturday i was like i don't feel like red and green i feel like yellow and maybe this is why cupid and the sun awakening so this is like the happiest of all outcomes and here joining um again the ten of cups and the star do you have any idea how awesome Monday's going to be? Oh my goodness. When I picked this up, look what was behind it. You're not going to believe this. The four of fire. How awesome is this today? Oh, this is your card. I took it. And further is the moon. So what this tells us is uh, not only might you be revealing some secrets of your own, some may become illuminated for you because masculine, you've got the star and the, I'm sorry, the sun and the moon together. And further to that, you've also got the star as shared with us as the overall energy. So how can this stuff remain dark? It can't. It has no choice but to become illuminated, surrounded by the sun and the star. Feminine. And ours is justice. We're getting our just due. We're getting what is um, fair uh, and appropriate for us this week. Maybe that's where all this money is coming from. 
right? We've been waiting, um, and it's our turn. It's our turn to be able to go back to school. We waited, maybe. Maybe we took care of, of our children and things first, and now, you know, they're off doing something else, and we finally got a little time for ourselves, but we didn't have the money, you know, and it, that's just not fair. The fairness is coming, and that's why there's great news about financial matters on its way. We will be able to be the nine of earth and to do um, what makes us feel comfortable without panicking. We will be able to trust in the universe and take a leap of faith and end up in a good place here, here, here. Basically, anywhere we jump uh, from this dream of card is fine. And <laughs> wow, we've got like all the court cards of the suit of water here. We got the 10, the knight, the queen, and the king. The knight of water is emotional, romantic, enthusiastic, and contemplative, falling in love or wedding proposals. The need to balance emotions and invitation to a social event. People, the advice this week or this day is to be in love and be happy and trust the universe, trust God. The end. I hope that you enjoyed the reading. Namaste, angels.